Ready? Yes. yes. Welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast, episode 21-6, which is, I think, technically 208. A also a large number. <laughs> Very large number. We're your hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernail. Every week, we bring to you the greatest, the best, the most magnanimous, the, 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 the best, the absolute best in video game music. No, every week we bring you adequate, moderate, <laughs> okay, at, at, at least great at best, <laughs> but music to your ears music. <laughs> Let's not go nuts. Let's not get people coming in writing angry levers. You promised us the best in video game music, uh, and I this, got me. Is this how we're going to start the show? You're going to pick a fight? Well, this is a worthy topic to pick a fight on. We have we have to get set the record straight on what we provide the listeners. Will our friendship survive this episode? It'll survive. It'll just be really hilarious. Really hilarious. All right, so last week, Purnell, you and I, we picked from our favorite games of the last decade. Mm -hmm. The week before that, we picked from our favorite games. You picked from your favorite games of 2019. <laughs> you picked <laughs> tracks from games. <laughs> My mind was more aspirational. Games I'd like to have played last year that I might play this year. Living the dream. I'm living that dream. And But this week, this week is a Patreon-exclusive live-streamed episode. So if you go to patreon.com slash rhythmandpixels and become a member of our show and contribute even just once, a tiny little bit, you get access every month to us recording the show live with you in the strat, in the stream chat. <laughs> in, in the, the strat. strat. I just call them strats now. In the strat. I'm cool. It's an esports thing. I'm uh, hip. <laughs> uh, and Purnell will crack jokes back with you, and we will also play um, requests. And if you're lucky, he'll also crack his hip. We'll crack everything. That's true. Um, and you get to see us goof off and have some fun. Um, we will also uh, play tracks suggested by you, and we will also read testimonials if you would like to send them to us, a la... You should send testimonials. The VGM Jukebox. Yes. May she rest in... Not, not she's not dead. She's just... I think... May I, she rest with lots of games. Yes. I believe that she is more hibernating. Yes. Yeah. Haju. Haju, we salute you. Don't, don't say it too loud, though. Haji will burst through that uh, door. Haunted hey, jukebox. You don't want that because, man, she can play some jam. I miss the jukebox. I do, too. I, I also miss too. Cookie. Yeah, I know you miss Cookie. So Cookie was the... okay. Yeah, cookie so we, was the dry bones. She was the dry bones, right? All right, so... Man, that lore ran deep, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> At first, I was confused, but then by the end of the episode, I was like, this is amazing. Haji and Cookie. <laughs> Wow. So in the chat, we have some we have some people in here, man. We've got uh, Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy. We've got Chris Murray. We got everybody talking about how old they are, which, by the way, makes all of us sub because I'm ancient. Mm. You're ancient-ish. Uh, VGM Jukebox All Star Cam O Worms is hanging out with us too for the first time this week. It's good to see you in there. He's fishing for fun. He's fishing for fun, and you know what? He's catching a big one. <laughs> oh God, we're terrible punters. He's reeling it in. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, we got a lot of music to get through. Um, before we get started, Pernell, did you have anything at the top you wanted to to, well, to, to chat about? Well, the it's funny. Um, so I am running on like. I'm burning fuel like crazy right now, and I am trying to get through my New Year's resolutions, and I decided I'm going to start keeping like a monthly record. Like in each month, I'm going to note how well I've done on each of them, just to keep focus, because usually I drop the ball on that stuff. But so far-ish, so good. I've been, uh, my exercise has been consistent. I started lifting weights. Um, review game season's kicking back in, so I'm not, like I said earlier, I'm not done with games, but hmm. now I'm actually trying to roll them back in in a controlled moderation okay. with my little list of Switch titles that I'm like, I need to play some of these. I want to beat at least one game right. on this blasted we, list this we, year. We talked about this last week. Have you prioritized? Have you thought about prioritization? Have you thought about what goes first, what goes last? No, I've thought about the Purnell way, which is <laughs> chaos across the board. Oh, man. But things are getting done. Things are getting done. Though I will say this, though. I am also attempting to... So, it's funny. People that know me know me, including you, obviously, know that generally I'm, I can... I'm glad social... I'm included. <laughs> oh, stop it, you. 
um, know that I'm generally good with socializing. I can just pick up a conversation and chat with people generally oh, yeah. at, at the drop of a hat. It's not hard. Yeah. However, I yeah, come to so. feel that a lot of that conversation occurs and nonetheless in a bit of a bubble. Like I'm always in some scenario where I'm comfortable, whether there's like one mutual conversation topic I can always latch on to. Yeah. Or you're or at a convention and a there's conv- a bunch of random people and, and someone knows you from somewhere. Right. Or everybody at the convention has the common thread that brings us all there. So even if we have nothing else in common, there will be games or anime or music or whatever. Mm. So I've been trying to, one of my resolutions to, I don't know, start dating people or whatever. Um, I'm trying to build up more conversation with people completely outside of my element, like just people. And it's had mixed results. Uh, I had lunch with a person today that I invited out on a whim. And lunch was awkward. Um, not so much for me, but more in the. Well, what'd you have? I had chicken fingers and fries. Chicken thinkies and fries. Oh, oh God, that Yoda stuff. Does he ever actually say chicken nuggies or fingies on that show? Yoda? I don't know. Is this a meme you're talking about? Uh, I, hey, I thought you were riding that meme, but now I just I, know we're in limbo. I hey, was the, just being cute because you love it. Oh, mercy, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, basically, we were eating and talking. And I'm trying to like, okay, think normal conversation. What do people talk about? So I asked, tried to ask her about herself. And she got in all this weird like office gossip. Okay. And we started yeah. talking about like gentrification. But it got weird because we were talking about the gentrification of my old neighborhood. And I'm sitting here talking like, do you really understand what you're talking about? Because clearly. You haven't been back in that neighborhood for a while, have you? <laughs> as a, yeah, she has it. And I'm like, no, this you don't tell me about how I feel about the gentrification of my old hood. Like, that's ridiculous. Whoa. But it got really weird on that umbrella. And it was just very bizarre. Like, and when I tried to learn stuff about her personally, she wasn't even letting that stuff go. At best, she was like, I used to run a massage parlor, blah, 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 but not the other kind. That's the, fine. That's the, fine. The, the above the board kind. We are, we are staying above the board on this exactly. show. Exactly. And hot. that's what that conversation did, too. But um, Good. that was what she used to do. That was like the best information I got ever. But as the dialogue happened, I'm sitting there going like, man, I want to talk about something I want to actually talk about. And yeah. I wish I could actually learn something about this person that I could actually utilize in like future endeavors of discussion, mm-hmm. like just to learn about the person. It was a frustrating convo. I was so glad when that lunch was over. So I wanted to complain about um, systemic racism in the city of Wilmington and gossip about work and talk about her past job. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing about the person. (laughs) Would have been nice if we even just talked about TV. I would have been loving to talk about Hmm. Good Place or whatever. But it was an experience. I got to tell you, man, movies and television, it's always a good... I think there's always a, it's always good. Like at, at some family events where we get like like all get together and we don't know what to talk about, mm-hmm. someone brings up a TV show they're watching and then everything's fine again. It's like it's like talking about the weather. It's the water cooler you can take with you. It's the water cooler you take with you. Rhythm and Pixels, the water cooler you take with you. Oh, that is true. Why didn't you? Why didn't you? Tell her about our show. We could have had another listener. Yeah, but just my <laughs> luck. Hey, I heard what you said about me on your show, sir. And every, I'm like, hey, yeah. just have you know, I didn't trash talk. I just every, didn't quite click. Every day he's here at work and you're like, why aren't you on our Patreon? <laughs> why haven't you subscribed to our YouTube? A dollar. Just a dollar. Come on. I ate the brownie you left. I ate the leftover brownie so you didn't have to. I didn't want that brownie, but it was a good brownie. You didn't want it. You know what? It's good. I'm glad you did it. It's. I think it's, I, I still think it's all very worthy. It's a good exercise. Keep doing it. That's what I'm going to try Keep to do because it. I figure ultimately the experience is going to lead to fruit labor fruits, yeah. which will then hopefully get me to the goals I want. You're flexing other my muscles. Birthday. That's what you're doing. You're, you're working out the the social muscles. You're working out the um uh, uh the pivot muscles. The pi- yeah, the, the the stick and move pivot. I mean, I don't know what kind of lunches these are. are you guys going to a paintball arena Just yeah. stick and move are you playing basketball no i'm talking about social pivot social oh yeah 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 you know you got to be able to roll with a conversation totally. which is not the easiest thing to do sometimes but it can be fun in the right situation all right but then back to the topic of our actual show i also was like i'll write these games down these are i i'm trying to think of a few of these games i want to get through i figure i'll name them if anyone in the actual group is listening and knows any of these games that they're like yes hone in on that bad boy yeah I'll let start me know in the chat you give me the top five. Okay, the just top off, five. off the list. It's off the list. Bloodstain, Mega Man Eleven, Fire Emblem Three Houses, 
Citizens of Space, Labyrinth of Refrain, Coven of Dust, Octopath Traver, and River City Girls. I went more than that, but I also okay. didn't go the full list. I, I'm going to tell you, skip Bloodstained. Skip? No! Why? You, have, you, did, have you played Symphony of the Night? Yeah. Play it again. But I already played that. You didn't, didn't do better. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, I, did. I, was at a point I, I, I have not gone back because it's been so buggy. Well, they did patch it. Oh, maybe I should go back then. I you mean, should. When did they patch it? <laughs> like oh, beginning of the month. Okay, because I've had some issues. Um, but no, uh, uh, um, I think you. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with Octopath Traveler because it looks really neat. And I know Chris Murray's been raving about Fire Emblem over the Twelve Houses. That's a lot of houses. Of the Four Fingers, Nine Fingers, Nine Fingers, Frodo of the Nine Fingers. Frodo. <laughs> All right, so let's get into some music, and then let's get into some more gabbing. Maybe we'll take some suggestions from the chat. And we'll go from there. I'm going to start with, because this is an even-numbered episode, and I am square. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick with rhombus, thank you. Okay. Um, this is a suggestion from a new Patreon member, and actually, I'm a fan of his podcast, KVGM, The Last Wave. This comes from Hammock. Hammock! Or, as he was known on the VGM jukebox, Super Kicks all day long. <laughs> I, do, I like that name. name this is from Tokyo Highway Battle for the Sony PlayStation. This is a track called Night Wind. listening to Night Wind from the game Tokyo Highway Battle for the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn, composed by Yasutaka Hamada, Shami, and Masahiro Kusanuki. Yeah, that was a total MC Shami. voice. Welcome back! You're listening to the Rape Grapevine! That's right, you're listening to the Highway Tokyo Battle, composed by that wild cat! And during the, the break, we, re- we got a call from Hammock himself, and he liked to say... The perfect balance between smooth and rocking out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should we just start calling you Wolfman? Wolfman. Oh, do not call me Wolfman. I right, Rob the Wolfman Nichols. Don't even, don't even joke about that. <laughs> if this were a full moon <laughs> and I'm not locked in my basement protecting the world from... Anyway, this is a dumb joke. This is a fantastic track. Oh, let's oh do Chris, solo. Chris Murray said, Rob, please do the quiz with the over-the-top morning <laughs> drive radio voice. I know. I think I think the last quiz I did with you was Kirby Jeopardy, and I tried to do like a like an Alex Trebek situation, but that was not <laughs> not, not, not no, working out too well. No, unfortunately, you're incorrect. The actual answer is what you do about what? I'll do uh I'll do um the from the chopped. I'll do uh Tim Allen. Ted Allen. This dude I'm afraid you've been chopped. Is judges. that how he actually sounds? Yeah, he's so nice. He, like when people get when people get cut from that show, he is just so friendly. He's like the nicest guy, and like you just like oh, he like really feels for them, you know. Like I'm really sorry, but we <laughs> yeah. have to cut you from the show. But however, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. We have 
an episode recording in the back just for cut participants that you'll star in. You just have to go behind the curtain and you'll be on another show. Everyone comes away a winner here. Why did I say that? <laughs> Why did I have to tell him that? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry that you didn't win, but here, take the keys to my car. It's just, I just, I, I would feel better for it. <laughs> I was going to sell it, but I'd rather just give it to you. It'll make you feel better. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, there's a whole series of games called uh, Tokyo Night Battle or um, CU Toku Battle that was on uh, the Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. and it was by Bulletproof Software. Okay. And it looks like this is the same um, company on the Sony PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. So they must have just continued the whole series. And I think it goes on to be that one that was on uh, Metropolis Street Racer. That was on no no that was Sega. I think I think Metropolis Street Racer on the Sega Dreamcast was inspired by these games. Okay. Well, in my mind, I think um, you know the uh, Wangan Wangan Midnight. Wangan Midnight is a lot like this. And that's actually still in the arcades now. Mm -hmm. you still play. And I didn't know about this game. And, I, and, and this is why I'm so glad that we have people in the community like Hammock. Oh, wait. I got to gotta, gotta confirm something here. So okay, okay. okay. So got to the dude said something that I was waiting for someone to say exactly this, but I'm glad it happened. All right, so we got um, breaking news from our chat room, Pranel. Well, well, it's more so a question of, wait, this came out this decade? Dude says this came out this decade as a question. And my response to that is, nope. Because the topic 100% was games that were your favorites this decade. However, not everybody necessarily submitted oh, in that regard. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I just, I just was like, this song is an absolute jam, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pass up an opening track from the KVGM, the last wave, to be on our show. Also, I'm glad this is a live recording because I'm gonna state this. This should be fun. So you'll have to go back and do that, Mr. Black voice. Over when I said his name and go, oh. listener, oh. dude. Oh, we, we can absolutely do that. Uh, so the dude wrote to us, and the dude is a nice dude. But Purnell. Ha <laughs> ha! But Purnell, let's go on to your first track of the night. Woo! Oh, right. yeah, mercy. All right. That's good. <laughs> like, I am not the Wolfman Nichols. I'm going to tell you right now, in 15 minutes, that energy is like. <laughs> well, I'm going to say now, this is going to be an episode where I'm going to have a number of weird pronunciations, both sometimes from tracks and also from the composers of said tracks. Oh, interesting. But this first one that I'm choosing comes from listener Dan Lawton. Mm -hmm. It is from, uh, surprisingly, also a favorite game of mine, uh, Dark Souls 3. And the track title is called Ludex Gunder. Huh, I think I actually got that. I think you got it right. And it's composed by Motoi Sakuraba. You bet.
You're listening to, oh boy, Ludex Gunder from the game <laughs> Dark Souls 3, released April 12, 2016 on you know the current gen consoles at the time, Xbox and PS, Xbox One and PS4. Submitted by listener Dan Loughton, composed by Motui Sakuraba. His testimonial is as follows. I chose this track because the FromSoft defined the decade for me. The Soulsborne series, Sekiro and Armor Core, are amongst my favorite games of all time. I have further embraced difficulty in speedrunning games. Yes. This franchise welcomes both. Ludex means judge in Latin, and there's something fitting about being judged to see if you are worthy of even trying to play the game. Nothing like a punishing tutorial to set the mood, and I have to agree with him wholeheartedly on that. Because, quite frankly, as I was saying on the cut, I know this track. I knew it immediately because I died to this jerk way more times <laughs> than I care to admit openly. Yeah, no kidding. It was rough. But even though I mentioned in the previous episode that Dark Souls 1 was in my game of the decade because, it one, it was the one I finished. And one, the primary reason I finished it or noted it was because it was the first of the lineage. But I honestly did feel as though the third game was the best put together of the bunch and even the opening area was just really nice i i because of its difficulty and because of its like its lore its, its legacy you know like uh, how people know about it it gets me interested to play it but that kind of be uh 3d behind the back like it kind of makes me motion sick really quickly i, I gotta i gotta say I'll, this I'll statement have to, i'll have though. to try it though here's a statement i gotta make because it came up in the chat Chris Murray says, Is it possible to play these games on a reasonable difficulty? Is there? Everyone's saying no, but I have a, a follow-up to that. So, while you can't go into the game and say, Give me easy mode, please, that doesn't mean there aren't ways around the difficulty. And I know this because I have a friend who originally hated the game because they were too difficult, but came away with finding his way to play through the game with as minimal challenge you can possibly get. And what that is, is helping other people. Mm. You join a game, you intentionally die, you go spirit mode, and keep getting summoned into other players' games. You work with them to do the levels. By doing this, you lose. You have zero risk of losing any of your experience, which is one of the things that makes Dark Souls games hard in the first place. Okay. You can't lose your experience because you're a ghost. You get to learn all the enemy patterns in other people's games, which removes the you know, penalty for you. They still have the penalty, but you don't. Uh, you get all the experience from them, and when you fight bosses, the same thing. So what that friend did was he played the game primarily as a helper player, learned the ins and outs, and used all the experience he got to juice himself up in hit points <laughs> to the point where he was a meat shield and could just walk through enemy hits. So all of a sudden... All those super punishing blows you take from bosses meant very little to him, and he beat the game before I did. So, oh wow! So, so there, there's ways to work with the difficulty, very much. Rather so. than going against the grain and trying to defeat the game that way, you can kind of just. I like that. Work, go, go, go with it. Yeah, just go with it. Like Dan, yeah, Dan like, Lawton is a primarily kind of, kind of, player of it, offline, and that's yeah. the thing. And you can do that if you want, but at that point. 
you're welcoming the difficulty. There's nothing to complain about at that point. They made the online element specifically to make it possible for players who aren't tanking on their own right. to The game was designed with that way. in mind, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you primarily or only play offline, you're neutering the diff- you're neutering your your options for yourself. You're mm-hmm. not giving you're not opening the game up to its fullest potential in that regard. Right. And right. I was like that too. Dark Souls one, primarily solo player. Until I got to those two jerks, Smog and Ornstein. Mm-hmm. Then I went co-op because I started helping other players, which helped me learn how to fight them. And then I went back See, and beat them alone. Stories like that get me so interested to play it. To play it, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get around to it because there's so much to play. Okay, um, we're going to move on to our next track. This is suggested by that Nick Walker. This is one of my favorite classic Sega Genesis songs from one of my favorite classic Sega Genesis games. This is Shining Force Two, composed by Motowaki Takanoichi. This is the town theme. I I love this track. back you're listening to the town theme from the game shining force 2 for the sega genesis composed by motowaki takanuichi and um, this was selected by that nick walker and he says hey robin Purnell, hope the new year treated you well this month's pick for me is the town theme from shining force 2 i never owned a genesis growing up until we got sonic the hedgehog on the game boy advance which ran like absolute trash i've <laughs> seriously never played a game boy game that lagged and dropped frames um, I never played a game from the Genesis either until my brother got the Ultimate Genesis Collection on the Xbox 360. I was never exposed to the totally unique sound of the Genesis, besides being a really good game on its own. Shining Force 2 was a total standout to me. Mm-hmm. This soundtrack sounded like they did their best to put together a bloopy blarpy orchestra, and I loved every moment of it. And this is, and that that's that's his testimony. That's that. Thank you very much, uh, Nick Walker. The um, see for me, I never had a Super Nintendo. So the, to me, the Super Nintendo was one of the weirdest, unique sounds I've ever heard. Really? Because like the samples were all kind of like out of tune a little bit and just like filtered. Mm-hmm. And to me, this is video game music, you know? Oh, this? Yeah. So I never owned this game. In fact, I only ever owned Shining Force 1, which I've actually only played the first battle in. I played this game via Sega Channel, and I played it multiple times via Sega Channel. Yeah, Sega Channel really so gave you like a, a lot of uh, opportunity to play play m- many different games. It really did, yeah. which is why I always talk about it in the most positive of light. Mm-hmm. Though it's interesting, as this track played, it reminded me of a discussion that I had last night, and it factors into this game too. So, you listen to game music, right? Yes. And if you're familiar with the game, sometimes the music for the game resonates with you best when you also picture the sound effects that play while you're listening to the track. Yes, yes, yes. Like some final like I don't like sometimes I'll hear a Final Fantasy track. Like from from any of them. And 
it doesn't sound complete in my mind unless I hear the little chirp of the uh, of the cursor moving around the menus. Yes. Yeah. Like last night, I reviewed a game where the text sound that scrolls across the screen is the same <laughs> text sound that plays when you play Gargoyles Quest. Yeah. yeah. So like I heard, I was like Gargoyles Quest from the Game Boy. It sounds just like it. And in this right here, as I hear this music, all I hear is the text sound when you go to the shops and you pick the icons and it goes. Whoosh, whoosh, Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm just hearing that in my head as this track plays because you spend so much time buying weapons for every individual member of your yes, party, every you and know, equipping them, and equipping them all individually because it's just that kind of uh, quality of life addition they never really added until much, much later in RPGs, especially since the Genesis. But Pernell, I have a question for you. Do you know forty two? What do you know about the Atari Twenty Six Hundred? I know it existed. The Atari I used to own one VCS. You know, you know the VCS. Yeah, it's a trade show. <laughs> it's, no, it is the uh, it is the uh, video computer system. Oh, and boy. I have a quiz for you and for everyone in the chat room and everyone at home. Is this a real Atari Twenty Six Hundred game? Because there were a lot of um, arcade ports. There were a lot of originals, and there were a lot of weird, weird third-party games. Hmm. And so oh. we're going to test your uh, deductive Am skills Am I allowed here. to look at the screen here? Yes, because I have taken all the answers out. Oh, okay. Okay? And I've got some fun pictures and stuff, too. Okay, Purnell, are you ready? No. To play? No. Is this a real Atari 2600 game? Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. Here we go. Number one. We're going to start easy, Okay. Okay. Tennis, the classic sports game for two players. I'm going with false because tennis isn't a real sport. No, I can't. <laughs> tennis is 100% a real Atari 2600 game. It better be. It is. There's the tennis. All right. Tennis. It better be. I love the artwork. I, I, I had to capture all the artwork. I mean, it's, it's very 70s. It's my favorite. Aesthetic. Even though the system came out. It's in so the green. 80s. All right, next one. Kaboom! Exclamation. Use the paddle controller to stop a mad bomber from destroying the city. I'm going with yes. Kaboom sounds like a real game. <laughs> it just seems like an old game by the name. It yeah. is. Yeah, Kaboom. This is classic. Classic, yeah. classic game. I love how he's like just a burglar. <laughs> it, I know. It, it was originally an arcade game, and it was um, uh, uh, boulders falling off a mountain, and you had to stop the boulders from hitting a city. Oh, okay. Yeah, I then, appreciate that. Okay, coming up next. On Philly 57. Jump Rope. Help Jamie Jumper become the Jump Rope World Champion by completing all five difficulty levels. I refuse to believe that's a real game. You're saying no. I'm definitely saying Are you, no. saying, are you sure? Everyone's saying Jamie fake. Jamie Jumper. <laughs> fake. <laughs> Jamie Jumper. That one was fake. You caught me on that one. Yeah, Jamie Jumper. Ja yeah, Jamie Jumper. Whoever, if that was a real game, the guy who named Jamie Jumper should just be fired. They should have been fired. I, you can't fire me. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> just a handful for the road. Okay, you're coming up next. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Pepsi Invaders, a reskinned Space Invaders with Pepsi Cola product placement. Real or fake? Real or fake? I could see that being a product, like a, like a mean, promotional game. I mean, okay, Space Invaders is was enormous, and Pepsi Cola was really coming into its own in the eighties. No, you're saying you're fake. Saying it's fake. Fake. It was real. Oh my gosh, it stuck with my gut. Because I've never seen that before, but there was a part of me like, I could see I had been given out. It was like, if you send in like five bottles, <laughs> five can tops. They're saying Pepsi Man is real in the chat. <laughs> oh, Pepsi Man is real. Oh, Chris Murray says that should have been Jamie Jumperson. You All know, right, that, I would have believed in that. In hindsight. So yeah, so Pepsi Invaders was a, uh, a Pepsi Cola tie-in. Very, very rare cartridge. I should have stuck with my gut. Very, very few in existence. Came out in 1983. All right, Pepsi. here's the next one. Uh, Sky Jinx. Guide your airplane through time trial courses, avoiding obstacles like trees and hot air balloons. That's a Sky level. Jinx for the Atari 2600. Well, I grew up in Wilmington, and as a man who likes hot, spicy foods, and yes. also knows that Tiny Toon Avengers has a level called Sky Jinx. Yes, true. I'm going to go with this is a real game. And it's real. Sky Jinx for use with the Atari video computer system. Again, with that amazing artwork. That's one of the original... Uh, 2600 games. I, don't think I just like how title. all these covers have like those like retro rainbows. Oh, it's great. It's a rainbow, but it's all like yellow and brown. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. You ate a lot of beans. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm catching some people out here. Here's the next one. Pet the pig. No. 
players guide Hammy the pig through five difficulties of mazes. Eat all the apples, but avoid the hungry barbecue cooks. That's a case of I want it to be real, so it has to be fake. Pet the pig. Pet the pig is pet the fake. It's fake. You caught me. You're That's, doing you're doing very well. That was too good to be real. Pranel, you're doing very well. Oh shucks. <laughs> I hope I get a gold star for this one. Alright, well I'm, I forget what I have next. Oh, Journey Escape. You're on the road with the world famous rock band Journey. Guide each band member past groupies, photographers, and other obstacles. Going with real. Yeah? Yes. Do you know this one? No. Because it's a real game. I knew it was real. It was. It, it, it wasn't. This is not a rare game. This is all. I love how many <laughs> everyone else is missing it. They're like uh, fake, fake, fake. What? What made you say it was real? I believed. You believed. It was more than a feeling. Oh, but I. Be- <laughs> it was more than a feeling. I just gotta say. All right. Well, good. That's very good. So far, you are not missing any of these. Uh, yeah. So in the game Journey Escape for the Atari, you are avoiding like photographers and paparazzi, but like. None of, none of it looks like that. <laughs> Davy Cake said, did I eat too much chocolate? <laughs> I'm not sure if that came up during the episode uh, proper, but we learned earlier that you can eat so much chocolate that you hallucinate. Oh my gosh, the dude is 4-3. I love it. Okay, coming up next is Dirty Dancing. Help guide Patrick Swayze through the crowded dance floor to sweep Jennifer Baby Gray off her feet. <sighs> they, made, they made a Journey game. They made a Pepsi game. Did they I'm- make a game for Dirty Dancing? Fake. I wish it was real. You and me both. That would have been amazing, right? It would have been. Ah. But it's not. <laughs> I couldn't put baby in the corner or on the shelf. All right, coming up next, lobster racing. <laughs> You're like, Are you serious? Just go with it. Fast-paced gambling action, not a racing game. For four players, place your bets and let the fastest lobster win. That sounds like a Japanese game show. But the Atari's in a U.S. console. Lobster racing. You know what? Yeah, I know. You're saying fake? Yes. You're calling fake? It's shenanigans. It's fake. <laughs> four, I like it. Chris Moore says four players? Fake. Yes. <laughs> four players. You pass the controller around. This is like the Wii U. I was about to say, it's, it's totally fake. Being that this is Atari, there were ways they would have worked around it to make it sure, four players. Sure, sure, sure. That's why I believe the players can't wasn't went through it all. Thank you for playing. So I'm going to be blunt. <laughs> I personally feel like I got every one of them. Pepsi Invader was a shenagle daigle. Yeah, you almost didn't get that one. I thought I was going to catch you with Journey being a real game. Oh. Because oh. it was totally real. Oh, man, I'm on point with this. <laughs> Making people laugh. The crayfish racing <laughs> is real. Crayfish racing is real. Um, all right. So um, thank you for playing for now. Thank you for playing everybody at home. Um, Do yeah, they go. all get free you know, tea sets and cozies for playing? Yes. Yeah, and you'll get um, uh, Rhythm and Pixels branded tea sets tea trays shipping in 2032 yes um it's one of our stretch goals for our kickstarter so all right um so that was good thank you for playing uh, is this a real atari 2600 game everyone wins a copy of lobster race <laughs> everyone wins lobster racing i have to make that game now <laughs> all right um for now we're on to your second track of the evening all right, so and I'm gonna bring this. I'll bring a game up after we come back because Lobster Racing reminded me of it. <laughs> but um, the next track comes from listener Soulless Sanctuary from a game that is in my eternal backlog. Unfortunately, uh, this is from the game Xenoblade Chronicles X. The title is called Theme X, released for the Wii U on December fourth, two thousand fifteen, and composed by Hiro Yuki Sawano.
Welcome back. You just listened to an excellently selected pick from listener Solar Sanctuary from the game Xenoblade Chronicles X titled Theme X, released for the Wii U and composed by Hiroyuki Sawano. She created a great testimonial, which I will now read. Wow, I know I'm in the okay, future. On, I did it once. I had, I had to try. I had to try. Cut me some slack. But I'm going to be serious now. She's my buddy. <laughs> well, I know I'm in the future, a day ahead in the morning for you guys. As usual, my request is actually a dedication for my youngest brother's birthday. On the same day, no less. Though he doesn't listen to the podcast or any other podcast, but whatever. Right now, my youngest bro is staying in Minnesota, and I, along with my other brother who is staying with me, still miss him. Thank goodness for the internet, though, because even if we are so far apart after nearly 20 years of his life being together, we are still being the silly siblings, the same silly siblings, giggling about anime and especially video games. So, for his birthday, I like to play one of the songs from one of his favorite music composers, Hiroyuki Sawano. Oh crap, she put the check in. <laughs> the song was titled Theme X from the gay Xenoblade X or Xenoblade Chronicles X for the Wii U, which I really hope gets a Switch port one day. You and me both on that one. I picked this song because, again, this is from one of my youngest brother's favorite music composers. The fun fact is that Sawano is more of the anime OST composer, with his most popular works being from anime such as Kill a Kill and Attack on Titan, both a fantastic anime. So, when news that Sawano was to compose for Xenoblade X, we went nuts, because it marked his first time composing for a game or a console. Parentheses, I read he actually did compose music for mobile games earlier, though. Mm. And now, his latest video game music work is for League of Legends, which is Light and Shadow. Almost done. While I know my youngest bro won't be hearing this from you guys, I do wish him a great birthday. And may continue to be a great person and a wonderful brother. Happy birthday, my dude. Aww, I like that. That is a sweet testimonial. Oh, just so you know, I was just writing the the levels just to make you even. Oh, I was was all over the place. But I I gotta (laughs) read it like the... I have to do it. Man. No, that, that's, I wasn't trying to rush you or anything. That's, that's, that's just all I was doing. Just a little engineering magic in the background. But thank you. Thank you, Pilar, for that for that testimonial. I that like that. Wonderful testimony. That's great. I love it. And I, like I said earlier, when, while reading the testimonial, I wholeheartedly agree. I do own the CE for this on Wii U, but never opened it. Big shock. But I think this is one of those games. Whereas I didn't rebuy Tokyo Sessions. I do think if they did this on the Switch, I would rebuy this because this game would be so fitting for a portable play. Or just pick up and play whenever oh, yeah, you need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Sl- putting it to sleep. Just being able to, yeah, put the game to sleep. Yeah. Good, the game's not putting you to sleep. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've heard that the beginning <laughs> of the game can be a little bit of a drag, but play a I don't li- know. Play a little bit of you know, game, play, uh, drink a little chamomile tea. You know what? I'm going to add this Look to the, the add oh. this to the list. No, this is going the wrong direction, Pernell. No, it's gone on the list. Xenoblade Chronicles X. You're supposed to narrow it down. <laughs> Not and add. also Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Oh, They're Pernell. on the list. But I will say maybe it will help me to not buy more. Okay. I haven't bought any games the entire month of January. You know what? That's good. That's a, that's a huge that's a huge get. Yeah, man. All right. People might be thinking, well, just cheating. Nothing came out in January. And I'm going to say that never mattered before. <laughs> never, ma- <laughs> <laughs> never mattered before. That's so. hilarious. Oh, okay, so my last track is from listener, Patreon member, and friend Cameron Worma. This is the song Prophecy from the game Salt and Sanctuary, composed by James Silver.
we're back. You're listening to Prophecy from the game Salt and Sanctuary, composed by James Silva. And this was recommended to us by Cameron Worma. Cameron says, I bought my Switch shortly after Mega Man 11 came out. So yeah, that was around uh, in Connecticut, mm-hmm. uh, at Retro World, because we were all playing Mega Man 11 at Ed's house. Yep. Um, mostly to play that and await the arrival of Metroid Prime 4. My friend had been telling me about Salt and Sanctuary for what seems like a couple years, but I didn't think much of it because I knew I had no way of playing it. I saw it was available on the, on the Switch, so I figured I'd make it my second game and bought it immediately after beating Mega Man 11. Long story short, I was hooked pretty much immediately. It has everything I love in an action side-scroller and so much more. I hadn't and still haven't played Dark Souls, and so the, all the, the Souls elements in this game were brand new to me. The graphic style, the weapon, magic, equipment, and skill systems, the dark yet whimsical atmosphere, the immersive environments, the difficulty, the relentless AI, the stakes, the terror of encountering a new boss, all amounts to an endlessly enjoyable experience that is reliably rewarding. The music isn't phenomenal on its own, but it suits the game perfectly. This track could easily be mistaken for Schism by Tool. I agree. I was thinking Tool. Whoa! Stephen Miller also said this sounds like Tool. Yeah, I I couldn't think of a Schism. Absolutely. Um, And that was clearly the inspiration, but it stands on its own and does a great job as a backdrop and exploration theme. Cameron, thank you so much for sharing this with us. This is a deeply emotional song, actually. I, and I, I want like to follow it. this up, too. Since you guys were both talking about it, it sounds like Tool, and it sounds like you like the OST, since I also know that you guys are the types that will listen to music without playing the game itself. That's true. It's a proper time <laughs> to suggest look up the OST for Charlie Murder also, because uh, that's yeah. also him. That's mm-hmm. one of his earlier games. Oh, okay. And the OST in that game is so good. <laughs> So good, and it sounds a lot like this, and it is a bit more range to it, but it carries this same style still. Um, I was okay. That was that. That was that beat 'em up game, right? Yeah, yeah. That was you're the rock band. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Okay, so Cameron, thank you, thank you for this track, thank you for this moody, this moody. Thank you for Tool. Thank you for Tool, (laughs) Cameron. Thank you for the band Tool. <laughs> I think they, re- they released their first album in like like oh, almost a decade, uh, just last year. And I feel like I heard someone recently say that they still do that they're doing shows this year, like yeah. they're going on tour again. They're wildly popular. Um, I mean, I like Tool. I never really got like super into them. Um, maybe it's just the kind of rock style that I never really connected with. But when I every time I hear a song, I'm like, oh yeah, that's really impressive. I got more into them when they were in Guitar Hero, <laughs> mm-hmm. because the the songs were always really complicated and really um, uh, technically in- interesting, mm-hmm. which makes sense. That's another thing I like about like a lot of music games. Never yes, it really introduces us to music, right? Yeah, and yeah. there's music that you wouldn't pay me to have listened to on the radio by default, but playing it in a game, I all of a sudden suddenly think the track is awesome. Like I'll never. I think my most notorious one is that one song, La La. Like la la something blah blah blah, blah whatever. Um, I can't remember the composer, but I'm sure <laughs> someone would know, know. Total popular pop song from back in the day. I hate it until I played it in Elite Beat Agents. Yeah, and then just it stuck. It just and gets now stuck I listen it. to it on the radio, no problem. Oh, for Before me, that, yeah, nope. It was um, Avril Lavigne, I think, on Guitar Hero. Like these songs, like you don't think about, it, and suddenly they're just in your brain. It's the magic of pop. I yeah. mean, pop music by design is meant to earworm into your yeah, head because I'm, it follows a scientific proven method to constantly carry a beat that mm. the human brain is enticed to like. Yeah, and write, writing that stuff is, is it's not cookie cutter by any means. Like you have to be extremely clever. And I think to accomplish a really catchy tune, catchy melodies that gets everyone interested in a mm-hmm. in, into your into your song is is quite a thing. It, it makes you think about that a grumpy man at the party is like sitting in the corner of his arms crossed with a grumpy face tapped and feels like this is stupid. Oh, I wish I was listening to Tool. <laughs> yeah, but he's still tapping his foot. <laughs> he's still tapping because his foot. Because the music's doing its job. All right. Uh, we are going to, Purnell, uh, your final track of the evening. All right. Let me go down my list here. Where did I leave? Oh, oh, here's one that came through from a listener. I did not expect this to get on here, but then I looped it five times at work, which means <laughs> it's definitely coming on the show. Oh, what's that? This comes from listener Steve Miller. This is a track from the game The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which is going on the list right now, actually. (laughs) And the track is titled Blood on the Cobblestones, composed by name I'm going to mispronounce, Marcin Prisbolowicz. Nailed it.
I'm going to tell you right now, you nailed it. Billowich. Yeah, you had no, oh, that you're, you're going farther. No, that was that was closer. Colder, colder. Hey, no, cold. Colder. <laughs> no cold. A little too far. It's all right. I was busy throwing a coin to my Witcher anyway. Yeah, I had to get that in there. So, <laughs> you were just listening to Blood on the Cobblestones from The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, submitted by listener Stephen Miller and composed by Marcin Prisbilowicz. And some released originally, because this game actually recently got released on the Switch, but originally it came out on May 19th, 2015 on, I want to say, Xbox One and PS4. Hmm. Definitely on Xbox. That's what I got it for, though. No, it was on both because I got those blasted, well, that, that card game. I got both versions of it. Okay. It came with yeah. DLC. So this game is a stellar banger. But before we even talk about uh, do that. We have, do we have a testimonial? Eh, more like a statement. Okay, a statement. <laughs> I heard this for the first time last night playing Witcher 3. I love the almost industrial drum beat and the sharp yeah. strings. True. As always, I hope you enjoy. And it's interesting because this track... Shot the ladder for him and just those plays to the point where he's like, it's top in the decade. Yeah, it's and, like it just took it right there, huh? And I've heard enough people talk about this game that I can believe that this could just that quickly fall on someone's top of the decade list because I've heard nothing but good things. The only reason, oh, well, question, I've heard some people dislike it, but the reasoning is more of a subjective thing and that they feel it plays a bit slow, which I can totally understand. Yeah, I, I have issues with games that do that. Like, um, oh, what was that? Nino Cooney. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could not do. And there's something to be said about that, The too. opening was too slow. Maybe it gets better on, but I couldn't I couldn't stick with it. And sometimes I will admit, like, if your time is limited or mm -hmm. if you're... This isn't, this isn't the slight because it's going to sound like it. If your attention span isn't quite hanging yeah. or slow buildup... Sure. Such a thing is an immediate turnoff for a game. And I've been like that with games yeah. myself. Totally valid. Definitely like that with reading novels. If a novel starts out slow and doesn't really pick up for 300 pages, I'm not going to make it that far. <laughs> I'm closing the book. I'm similar to... I mean, sometimes. Depends on, on the mood I'm in. Um, I can I can kind of hang with it. But um, in... Uh, you know what I can hang with? Mr. Cooper? I'm hanging with Mr. Cooper. That's right. Are you We're ready? old. Are you ready for the next quiz? There's two. Is this a hanging with Mr. Cooper episode? No, I'm kidding. Um, we're going to go into <laughs> Don't the. Do that to me. Don't we're do going to go into me. the part of the show that we call the bonus round. Wait, is that the quiz? The bonus round is not a quiz. The bonus round. <laughs> you usually make like funny mouth noises. So that was, was the one. That was the one. Okay, it was like questionable bonus round because I started to think, is that is that it? That's fine. Okay. Anyway, the bonus round is where we play covers and remixes and arrangements based on our theme, and we also like to play um, tracks that are have vocals in them usually that we wouldn't play normally. 
and, and the, the quiz. And, and, and uh, no, the quiz is over. Oh, so you you fake you pump faked me. Pump fake. Oh, I was all geared up to fail a quiz. Uh, now you don't see me. Lay up two points. Rob Nichols touchdown for the win. Oh mercy! That's <laughs> terrible sports ball. <laughs> All right, my uh, my bonus round track, it comes from the person, Davy Cakes. Davy Cakes picked the track Break Out Of from Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, composed by Atsushi Kita Joe, lyrics by Lotus Juice, and vocals by Shihoko Harada. And I got to say flat out, Rob beat me to this one because I was eyeballing it oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is... We were going through our tracks. Uh, uh, we were at work at our, our respective jobs, and we were just like, texting back and forth. And um, Pernell was like, "You take it, man. It's it's too good. I want you to have it." <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm gonna rep this track. So this is from Persona Four Ultimax. Max. Thank you, Davy Cakes.
That was Break Out Of from Persona 4 Arena Ultimax um, with music by Atsushi Kitajo, um, lyrics and rapping by Lotus Juice, drip, drip. and vocals by Shihoko Harada. And um, yeah, that came from Davey Cakes. That was a banger. He says, the struggle was real. A whole decade of amazing games and soundtracks. I've had a nostalgic two weeks or so spending my downtime going through everything I've played, revisiting songs and games of every genre, a lot of which I'd completely forgotten. I pretty much knew I'd come down to something from Persona or Ease or Shimigami Tensei, Kingdom Hearts or Pokemon. Well, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> All games I like. Yeah. And in the end, it did. Ha ha. Smiley face. Persona 4 Golden is my Final Fantasy X. <laughs> I've played through that Respect. game almost 10 times at this stage. I feel really bad because I always complain about not being able to get through a, more than one time. <laughs> this guy's <laughs> like 10, 10 times at this time. Uh, but I didn't want to cheat with a revamped re-release for my submission. So my choice is from the second spinoff Persona fighting game, Arena Ultimax, which came out in 2013. Holy nuggets, times flies. The main theme called, this is the main theme, called Break Out Of is composed, of course. Um, he has Shoji Maguro and also possibly Atsushi Kitajo, so it might be both. Um, and I've done, if I've done my research right, as both are credited on the soundtrack. It's a bit long, so if you're using it, feel free to play it for a reasonable amount of time. We're playing the whole darn thing, Davy Cakes, because this was a fantastic song. Excellent choice, sir. Yeah, it's Persona's got some of the best music. Sumigami Tensei's got some of the best music. Um, he actually... It's when I'm, so good. When we were listening to the music today, I actually ended up going back and listening to Bloody Destiny from the remix Persona 1 tracks. Oh, yeah. Because this made me want to listen to that. So... I always say that I prefer the original Persona 1's OST, and that hasn't changed. But with that said, listening to the music outside of the game, I like a lot of the Shoji Meguro takes on Persona 1 sounds, he's most got, particularly that boss theme. He's got like a cool, it's a dark, funky sound. Like it's it's dark, but also groovy. It's, like, mm -hmm. it's a dark groove. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a really unique sound. I, I really love it. Uh, I was uh, Devil Survivors got some amazing music. Oh, you have to remind. Oh, that's oh, so good. I played the Living Daylight side of Devil <laughs> Survivor one and two. We played so much of the music on the show, and I know there's still so, there's still so much more out there that's really good mm -hmm. that I'd like to get to. But um, I digress. Pernell, your bonus round pick. Where does it come from? It comes from the dude das Duderino <laughs> Dudenspiel. <laughs> Dudenspiel. That's a new one. Um. This track comes from a game that I will someday beat. That tower is just staring me in the face. That game is Shovel Knight, and the track is called Versus Plague Knight Remix. Submitted or remixed by Retro Spectre, and the game's original release date was June 26, 2014.
Welcome back. You are listening to, or were listening to, are listening to Versus Plague Knight Remix from the game Shovel Knight, submitted by listener The Dude, composed as remix by Retrospector. And holy crap, this track is slick, slick chips. Steven Miller was going nuts about it too. It's, it just seems to have been a very popular track. It's a good track. It was a heavy remix too. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I, I feel like at this point in doing the show and listening to tracks and and listening to music on my own, I feel like I know almost all of the remixers and people who put stuff on YouTube. And so when I find a new one that I haven't heard of before, I'm like, wow, how have I, how have I missed this one? <laughs> I think Retrospector hits that note for both of us. I've never <laughs> yeah. heard of this, but holy yeah, crap, neither. that was good. But that was great. So yeah, thank you. Was there a t- was there a testimonial that came with that or no? Actually, I believe there may have been. Give me one split second of grapefruit. <laughs> yes, here we go. Boom. Because I, I was like, I know I asked him to do it, so I'd be a jerk to not have had it. Here we go. Talala Shovel Knight showed me my love for many things. It rejuvenated my love for gaming in a time where all the AAA titles were exactly the same. Mm. Shovel Knight is the definition of a perfect game. The music is solid. The story is good. The gameplay, mwah, she's a crisp. <laughs> Retro Spectre is an awesome remix artist, and everyone should go and check out his work. All right. I think after hearing it just now, you the music already convinced all of us of yeah, that exact yeah. thing. If that's something you're into, definitely go check it out. Mm-hmm. So for more information on all the aspects of the bonus round, part of our show go to rhythmandpixels.com we're going to have links to we always have links to these artists sound clouds and band camps and everywhere where you can go and buy the music and support these artists Whoa. All right, thanks everyone for joining us on episode 21-6 of Rhythm and Pixels. This is our Patreon live-streamed episode with all music picks from Patreon members. Some being from tracks of their favorite songs or favorite games of the decade, and some just music they really like. Yeah, and this last track is from Cuphead. It was uh, one hell of a time picked from The Dude again. Honestly, it was one of those scenarios where it's like, I don't want to pick two tracks from one person, but yeah. this is a perfect track to at least go out on because holy cow, this it, is... I love the OC from this game, period. And it's better because this is a track I hadn't even heard in the game proper because I never got to King Dice. Oh. <laughs> and I feel like this might have been the track maybe for either him or the devil, but mm. I know I've never heard this track, which I was surprised by. Oh, well, this has been a great episode. But this is worth pointing out, though. What's I will that? say this because he didn't have a full testimony, but he did mention one interesting tidbit. Apparently, the Cuphead devs were like, or rather, the dev was so like determined to get this game out that he took a second mortgage out on his house to pay for it. Oh wow, that is terrifying. But if I you would... want to talk about an example of like taking a risk that paid off, this would be it because Cuphead sold very well. It did. I mean, it's it. It looks incredible. I mean, everyone saw it and was like, oh, it's hardcore, difficult, Contra-style gameplay that looks like this. I genuinely Everyone's want in. this to yeah. get done by like the guy who did Blazing Chrome oh, using his yeah, art yeah, yeah, style yeah, yeah. and animations because they could probably make it a longer game <sighs> with more weapon variety. I gotta say, Blazing Chrome is the standout, one of the standout soundtracks for me from last year. Oh, it's yeah. Just, it blew me away, the way it sounds. And um, the, it should the, be... A- the quality of the music and like... The throwback quality of it—it it sounds like it's from a from like a Genesis or a Snus- uh, classic NES. So good. Um, you got one more thing? Did I cut you off? No, no. I was just thinking. It's like in regards to, I don't know. What was I? I don't even know what I was about to freaking say. <laughs> well, maybe it'll come back to you because um, if we would like to say to you, the listeners, if you'd like to get in contact with us, if you'd like to say hi, if you have any um, topic suggestions or if uh, any suggestions of any musical artists you'd like for us to know, like uh, remixers or arrangers, send us an email. Rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. And if you'd like more information about our show, full track listings from all of the episodes and links to all the crazy, wacky stuff that we're doing, go to the website. Rhythmandpixels.com. Um, and if you'd like to uh, see us on on social media, where you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, it's... Rhythm and Pixels, all one word. Just search for us there. We have a group called Rhythm and Pixels Chat, 
where we all talk about games that we're playing and stuff like that. Yeah, check out youtube.com slash Rhythm and Pixels. We have a, um, all of our episodes are posted there. We have links to some other fun stuff. In Rhythm and Pixels chat. In the Rhythm and Pixels chat. Where Rhythm and Pixels chat. Where we all chat it up. And um, uh, we also have a Discord server. Where Rhythm and Pixels chat. Where there's more chats. Checks. I'm, all I'm hearing now is checks, like checks mix. God, I want some checks mix. <laughs> Muddy Buddies are so great. Oh, my gosh. Um, I like the salty ones, not the sweet ones. Um Anyway, I'm getting hungry again. <laughs> oh, that checks mix. Um, and if you'd like to support the show, um, you can just talk about it. You know, share it online, do whatever. That's that's good. But if you'd like to support in other ways, you can go to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. And there you can uh, support the show. And um, you get access to a monthly live stream, uh, just like this one right here. And you get access to um, little prequel episodes every week now that we're doing. We gabba gabba hey on occasion. Sometimes we even gabba gabba hey off the clock that's right so you can check that out and we'd like to thank you at the end of every episode so we'd like to thank that nick walker mike myers johan perez and we have a new patreon member um professor zalkova thank mm-hmm. you very much professor uh andreas milberg dan Lauten, phantom jest steve miller the autistic gamer 89 Cameron Worma, Christopher Shenstrom, Bobby Arson from One Up Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, OK Impala, Carlos Kung Fu Carlito from the Heroes 3 podcast, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast, Brian Pitt, Chris Marie, uh, uh, Hammock, Hammock, Hammock from KVGM The Last Wave. Thank you for your suggestion opening the show. Um, Bruce Irons from the Mad Gear Band. Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy, um, a fantastic uh, VGM podcast. Alexander Proudfoot, Davey Cakes, The Dude, The Last Recon, Bedroth, Kitsurito, Solus Sanctuary, Mix Six Master, Damian Beckles, Joe Vasallo, Chris Steenerson, The Messenger from his new podcast, The Messenger Presents a VGM Journey. Mm-hmm. Definitely check that out. Um, I've really been enjoying his episodes. And if you like really music-focused podcasts, give it a listen. You can check it out on Apple Apple Podcasts, I think. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's on the internet. It's on the up. And David Smith, who is um, David Smith. <laughs> check him out on uh, the internet. Check him out on the internet. Check him out. You know, he, I don't know where he lives, but if you're if you're near him, give him a. I bet, I'm sure you know David Smith. If you don't, if, <laughs> just go to the grocery store. You'll find one. Uh, but I love that, David. I have a buddy. Actually, it's funny. One of my old best friends was also named David Smith. Oh, really? It's a very common yeah, but great name. Yeah, it is. But um, yeah, when, when, he first, uh, when he first started doing this, I, I would get his name wrong for like months. Months I got his name wrong. That I'm, I'm probably still getting it wrong. I still and, believe you guys did that intentionally. And That's he, just me. Well, for a while, after, after a while, it just became a thing. And it was kind of fun. <laughs> But now for a while, I just kept screwing it up. Because by the end of the show, I'm, I'm kind of tired, and I'm talked out. And, and by the end of the show, I'm drinking 10 calories of Monster. So. Yeah, a lot of Monster in you. Um, you're more, more more Monster than man. Grr, grr, grr. Um, so next week, if everything comes out right, if all the, the scheduling comes out right, we'll have uh, an interview or a special guest on the show. Just got to come up with a topic to go with. He's got to get a topic with this guy. He is um, an indie game developer. Um, and he's making uh, some really cool card game, like collectible card game focused stuff. Totally my wheelhouse. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have him and we'll, and hopefully we'll have uh, the composer of the game on as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So look out for that. And I think that's everything, right? So we'll see you next week. My name's Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Thanks for listening to the show. And, see you next time. And remember, hopefully listening to this and all of our listeners' favorite games of 20 of the decade rather maybe one or two of them sparks your interest in a game that you have not played before excellent opportunity to try some new stuff outside of your wheelhouse because you got to admit there's a lot of people who like a lot of games and there's way more games out there than we're ever going to personally get exposed to so sometimes it's nice just to hear what other people like and take a stab at it. it might introduce you to stuff that you didn't expect to like or entire genres of games that you never expected to like so be open to other people's interests and likes and joys because there's a lot more games than we're 
generally susceptible, um, you know, exposed to. Just play more stuff. Yeah. More new stuff. Try some new things. New old things. Or play Final Fantasy X. Again. No. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Play Final <laughs> Fantasy VI. Yeah, that's where I said it. Six. I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good game. You suplex a train in it. That's true. What other game lets you do that?